Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Quentin GK. This is Donna Reyes, your host for this weekly Quentuhan. And tonight, we're very excited to have with us join this evening, Miss Sonia Delin. Uh, she's an entrepreneur, philanthropist, community leader, and mentor to many of the people she works with, whether in the corporate world, public service, or any of the many advocacies that she's involved with. Good evening, Miss Sonia, and thanks again for joining us this evening. How are you? Well, thank you so much, Donna. Thank you. I'm very, very honored to be uh, in your show. Uh, magandang gabi po, magandang umaga. Uh, good morning, good evening to everyone and to um, the supporters of Galat Karinga. Hello and thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. Um, so with your long list, oh my gosh, of accomplishments and, you know, and advocacies and everything, one interview is not going to be enough to talk about all of them, right? But what would make me really happy, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers will be very happy as well, is if you can talk to us one of your, about one of your advocacies, which is the Filipino food movement. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, I'm very happy to. Well, way back in 2010, how it started was that I was a co-owner of a restaurant in San Francisco. And uh, we were gathered by Ambassador Paynor to ho host um, a, a month-long event for June, which is, of course, our Independence Day celebration. And, um, and um, after that, we were all going to this band, and I said, you know, I got to meet so many Filipino chefs, very talented chefs, and I didn't realize we have so many, more than a dozen Filipino restaurants in San Francisco. And I decided, you know, I approached the Department of um, Tourism, and I said, you know what, I, and, and the consulate to hold a competition, like a top chef competition, professionals and then amateur and so I partnered with the Department of Tourism and we co-founded Culinaria. And that was the beginning. That was four years of holding professional chefs, professional division, and also the amateur division. And after that, um, TJ Casada, who is with Ramar Foods, and other um, six other volunteers, the, the seven of us decided that, you know, this time we should take it even, you know, further. Um, and for, we started the Filipino food movement. And the mission is to preserve, promote, and progress Filipino cuisine in the mainstream in the U.S. and then globally. And that's what we've been doing since 2014. We became um, the Filipino food movement. And uh, we started getting, you know, getting the, the Filipino chefs and restaurateurs together. Um, our first event was Savor Filipino in August of 2014, where we had 36 chefs what? from all over the country come to San Francisco. And then and we had this big event at the Justin Herman Plaza, which is an open air plaza in, in San Francisco. And we were, you know, expecting about 10,000 people throughout the day and 30,000 came. <laughs> Throughout the day, where we had we had we had um, different types of cuisine and uh, different types of um, you know, merienda, snacks, um, lunch, um, dinner, dinner, and we also had a beer garden for which is separated for um, Philippine uh, beverage, and right. so it, it became really very exciting that in, there is such a big support. And so we decided to really move on and really give support to our chefs and restaurants, restaurateurs in San Francisco. And since then, we have been, um, you know, for us, how we do this is through education and community building. We educate the people what the Filipino cuisine is, because for us, Filipino cuisine is personal, it is inclusive. And it's you know diversified, and so we really there's we really wanted people to know. Of course, you would always people would always say your adobo, is, my mom's adobo or my grandmother's adobo is better than yours. But we have so many different types of adobos, and they're good. And that, that, 
So one way of finding out really what Filipino food is, which is, you know, it's, it's a, you know, many different influences from many different regions. We have 7,101 islands or so. So or it's, it's, you know, it, it is exactly what you get from your local air environment. And that's how you make something that is different from, you know, I'm from Batangas. And so I maybe my maybe we cook differently adobo than in any other places. Right. And so that's how we feel that, you know, our food is personal. And then, and, but then it is very diverse and it is very inclusive. Um, so that's how we started. And then, you know, the media got, it, they, they featured us or they featured the food or they featured the chefs. And then really New York Times had an article about the mainstreaming of adobo and LA Times did and Bon Appetit. And that's the start of really getting, you know, Filipino cuisine uh, you know, a raising awareness about Philippine food. And so I really wanted, and I, you know, I coined Let's Go Filipino Tonight because, you know, people were all saying, where are we going? We go, Let's go Italian, let's go. So why uh -huh. not come to Filipino tonight? Right, right. There's so many things about what you shared there, just the first, you know, first few minutes of this interview that really, truly excites me. Number one, I'm familiar with culinaria, and I'm happy to tell you, I'm proud to share it with everybody, that when I worked for GMA uh, Pinoy TV in their, you know, the GMA Network's uh, G uh, international department, I was an events manager there. And Culinaria was one of those events that I, um, I reviewed and recommended for sponsorship. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I'm very, I'm very happy to, to just come, you know, it's a, I, I, I feel so happy how, you know, we get connected in that way. And then also what you said about, you know, like people start to notice, you know, we're, by, by launching the Filipino food, we're not only promoting our cuisine, but we're really promoting our culture. Right? Um, because it's really, food is a universal language, right? It's right. sort of, it really opened the door for, for, you know, for the, for the, uh, for the, for the, for the non-Filipino community to know who we are, right? To get to know who we are, right? And so that really, that really was, you know, it's really exciting for me. In fact, uh, you know, I was sharing, um, we did a three-part um, three series of uh, the Filipino food movement in, you know, in a previous, you know, previous uh, show that um, I hosted. It. That was really exciting how, you know, how people are really taking this of not only our, you know, delicious cuisine, obviously, right, Filipino cuisine, but also the richness of our culture. So very happy about that. Now, um, the Filipino food movement launched a, uh, a special gift um, package, a gift uh, what, basket, right? I don't know if they come in basket, they come in boxes, but it's a, it's a special gift package, right, which is a um, collection of um, Filipino um, was it uh, products from yeah, yeah. Just, you know, tell us about that. Yeah, well, um, I was very happy to meet Maricel Villanueva, Miss Maricel Villanueva from um, uh, Galwat Galina, USA, and um, we are collaborating on um, the, up this project to feed to be. To feed the, the hungry children in the you know hunger there be a hunger warrior and uh, part of that we had a two part event for for Gawad Kalina and that was the first one was a cooking demonstration by a chef Chef Noel Omamalin Dubai based uh, Filip Filipino chef in Dubai and um, it was um, a thank you by Gawad Kalina to all the supporters. It was a really beautiful event because it's really, it, it's so wonderful. I met, I, I went to Dubai in uh, February of this year, pre-COVID, to meet up with the field food, um, field food trade um, group in Dubai and have a collaboration with the Filipino food movement because they really have very good chefs in, in Dubai. And, and, and so one of them, um, we got introduced later to Chef Omamalin, and he did um, a spin on food for the, for the gods. So it's like, the gods must be crazy. So that's a way of, uh, for, the, for 
dapat ko lang USA to thank is uh, supporters. The second one is when Marisol um, approached me, what she really said was, you know, we would like to feature the chefs and the restaurants in the in the US because with COVID, they are the chefs, the restaurants are the most impacted. There are no more dine-in. You know, they have to go. They have to do takeout and deliveries in the U.S. and and and, and mostly around the world. And so, uh, it just just um, a way of thanking the chefs of supporting them. We decided we're going to just do. We were going to do gift boxes, and that is we are going to have products from local um, purveyors of Philippine products. So in San Francisco, we have the Sarap shop has their sauces and to mix it with chili oil and chili sauce and so and then we have from Seattle um, Filipino peanuts and so these are the kinds of things that we are going to include in our patikim. It sample the goodness of the Philippines and and so we are going we have three different boxes um, that we that we are um, you know, we have available on our website as well as GK. And in, in there are the different products. So if you move it up a little bit more, we will have, we have a whole um, list of products from around the U.S. I have one coming from the U.K. produced by a Filipino Brit. It's a calamansi marmalade and it's so, so good. And um, so these are the, the products that we have in our Patikim gift boxes. And the proceeds of this, part of the proceeds will go to the Feed the Hungry or the Kusina ng Kalinga uh, project uh, in the Philippines. And um, it's really great working together with uh, GK. And I'm very, very proud and very happy that we are you know, partnering with uh, GK to feed the hungry children of the Philippines. Well, first of all, on behalf of Gawad Kalinga, uh, USA and Gawad Kalinga Philippines, we thank you for, for um, partnering with us. Um, and even though, like you said, you know, a lot of the, um, the restaurant industry is one of the most um, negatively impacted by the pandemic. Um, you, you know, you, uh, the chefs and the people who produced and, you know, made this food still find it in their hearts to, you know, to share and, you know, make, make uh, the purchase more meaningful, right? So, this Christmas, we encourage everybody to purchase meaningful gifts, right? Not only gifts that your you know, loved ones, your friends and family will enjoy and will appreciate, but it's the gifts that keep on giving, right? It's right. how you know that by receiving those gifts, you are able to help out and, you know, make a difference in a family's life. In maybe even one hungry child, you know, I always say, there shouldn't be any hungry children this Christmas or ever, right? That's true. It's such a big help. Well, speaking of that, too, um, in addition to, you know, the Filipino food movement, you have been involved in a lot of, you know, a lot of organizations and advocacies that are really helping our beloved Philippines, right? Uh, one of them is the uh, what you had um, founded with uh, with uh, Apple the App, right? The uh, Campaign for Filipino Children uh, that you, it's a meant to, or it's a, its mission is to combat blindness, right? So you can prevent. A little bit more about that. Yes. Um, so a while back, Apple the app uh, of the Black Eyed Peas mm -hmm. uh, mandated its executive committee to uh, do a medical initiative because the Apple the app Foundation was building schools in the Philippines. They built over 36 schools, I believe. And they have computer labs and um, also music um, labs. But what, uh, because Apple is legally blind, he has sadness, and um, he wanted a medical initiative, which is more toward, towards um, preventing blindness caused by a disease called retinopathy of prematurity retinopathy of prematurity or ROP. This is a condition that is in premature, a newborn premature babies. And if the newborn premature baby is not 
you know, diagnosed and treated within 48 hours, the baby goes blind. And of course, that is very, uh, very, you know, difficult, especially the, the premature, preemie babies are mostly because of the lack, lack of uh, prenatal care. And, and, and so it's hitting the most vulnerable. And so what we, and we are so fortunate to be able to partner with the Philippine Academy of Ophthalmology in the, in the Philippines. And Dr. Uh, Pro Bililon had been very, very helpful and really uh, helped us in enrolling this project in the Philippines. And the first one we did in 2015 is that Apple and I went to Davao to donate this system called retinopathy, I mean, retinal imaging system to determine if the, ba if the baby has, has ROP, which is uh, excess, excessive oxyg oxygenation among premature babies. And um, we brought this red cam and laser to treat the, the condition. And we learned, and one thing that, you know, I was very surprised that we learned that this red cam, retina, retinal imaging system, was the, only the fifth red cam in the Philippines at that time. Four of which were in Metro Manila. And so the only one outside was in Davao, which will serve the Mindanao area. And we're still monitoring children. So aside from providing retinal imaging system and the laser, we also have training among um, the ophthalmologists. And it's really amazing because now ROP now is part of the curriculum of the uh, ophthalmologists in their residency. The second time that we did was in February in 2019, Apple and I went to his hometown of Pampanga at J.B. Linga Memorial Regional Hospital and delivered our second red M. And um, it was really wonderful. This, of course, his family was there and, and everybody else, you know, they're so happy to have him back. And I must tell you, Apple is an amazing person. Not only is he a great artist of the Black Eyed Peas, but he is really a person of, you know, he has a golden heart. Mm -hmm. And um, truly very humble, wanting to give back to the community. And that's all he does. I remember we were in Davao and I said, you know, we were sitting on the plane and everyone would say, can I have a photo? And he would get up and sit down again, get up until the plane door closed. And, I said, ah. and then we were also wait in the waiting area and, and people kept coming to him and we were shopping for souvenirs and people were asking to take photos. And I, I said to him, are you even bothered? Because I know some celebrities are bothered. It's like, no, they are who made me. They are who them. I not, will not be here. And that's what he is. He is really amazing. And, um, but I must tell you too, Apple is, um, is a good cook. Well, he's, I'm, I'm Kabalen. I'm from <laughs> Guagua, Pampanga. Lady Guagua. <laughs> I'm from Borgo from Pampanga. So if he's Kabalen, he's got to know how to cook. He is. He is. Because I have, um, I have, uh, I, we're going to feature him one of these days at uh, Culinary Alive. He's, he was just in, you know, early of the part of this um, half of the year, he was in London and now, but um, he's going to cook for us too. But he cooked um, just um, a few days ago for another initiative, but he, he's a good cook. So what, that's what we do. This, this campaign for Filipino children, which I am the chair of, is an initiative of the Apple, the Apple Foundation International. And um, we, would, we bring this ret retinal imaging system and laser to provincial hospitals versus being only in Manila. Mm -hmm. And so we are aiming for Iloilo uh, mm -hmm. in 2021. We couldn't go now because of COVID, but we would like to be able to provide that to them. That's awesome. That makes us really happy because, you know, we always say in Gawad Galinga, right, that one organization really is not enough, right? The, gov the government is not enough. You know, it's right. not, we can't, we can't have the, the government or, you know, one, you know, one organization takes care, you know, take care of the, of the different, you know, um, challenges that, you know, that our Kababayans are dealing with, right? So in, in Gawad Kalinga, we're always happy to hear about 
you know, other organizations who are helping our, um, you know, our Kababayans uh, as well. And like you said, you know, the, the most vulnerable really are the poor, right? So that's what advocacy in Gawad Kalina is really for the poor. And actually on that note, uh, Maricel Villanueva actually uh, uh, shared, let me see here, he, she said, happy to know about Apple's advocacy. GK cares about the first 1,000 points. And then she further said, uh, he, uh, referring to Apple, was among the first film entertainers to support GK. This is true. And so was the Black Eyed Peas. I remember when we had a, an event in San Diego, you know, uh, Black Eyed uh, Peas was there. He was among the first, yeah, first film entertainers to support GK. Remember that GK USA event, yeah, in San Diego in 2008, which he had lied. That is true. And then also from Dennis, um, he said, but the game is such a great cause and initiative. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. That's really inspiring also. Well, now, okay, Suyo Mano, what is it about? It says promoting Philippine culture and heritage. Can you talk to us uh, and share that? Oh, Mary Lou Kunanan is a very dear friend of mine. And she, um, well, after COVID or during the time of the pandemic, she mentioned to me that they have to pivot because uh, her business is related to sending people to the U.S. to become interns and, and you know, under fellowship. And of course, travel was no longer possible. So then she needed to pivot. And so I told her that probably what she could do, because she's good in training, she's, she has a good group of people. Um, the best thing is to continue to promote our culture is to um, open up, open an academy of, um, you know, talking about, because in the U.S., we, um, uh, I'm also with the UP Alumni Association of San Francisco. I'm currently the president. And we, when I joined UPAASF, we have, um, we instituted the Philippine Immersion Summer Camp, teaching the young kids uh, from 7 to 16 to um, learn about the culture, the language, the art. Um, and... Um, so I mentioned to her that she should open, that if she could open, so, uh, which, which she, she called Suyamano after. And so she developed this program um, with the idea of uh, making it available to people outside of the U.S., even uh, outside of the Philippines, and to have, you know, the, the third generation of Filipinos, as well as foreigners, to understand what the Philippine culture is learn Tagalog, learn about the history and everything about the Philippines. And it's, I'm very, very pleased and I would like to congratulate Mary Lou Conanan and her team on continuing to make this a really robust program for everyone in, in the world. And so um, that, that was really great because um, this is something that she's also, you know, giving back to the community and and for us to be able to um, promote our culture, our heritage, and preserve our heritage too. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that's awesome. And a few weeks ago, we actually had on the show um, uh, these young, uh, young men and young, you know, young women who were um, in the, who made a trip to the Philippines to know a little bit more about their heritage. It was sponsored by the Filipino school, you know, and, you know, and it was just an amazing experience uh, for them, you know, which they shared um, on the show. And then, you know, we really look forward to them, you know, sharing their experiences with others and really encouraging um, more young Phil Ams, right, younger Phil Ams to, you know, reconnect to their heritage. All right. So we have a comment from um, Carlos Capati. Hi, Tita Charlie. Tita Charlie is one of our staunch uh, Gawad Kalinga Advocates. Uh, he said, Apple, I heard, is an alumnus of Holy Angel University in Angela. So am I. So now, <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we're all Kabalins, right? Now, I'd like to ask you, um, Sonia, I know well, with all these advocacies, right? Well, and all of these things, so all the accomplishments and everything that you've been doing for the community, you are also a senior vice president at Bank of America, right? And uh, you sit on the boards of a state agency, nonprofit organizations, right? You're a published author. 
you're an executive producer. You produced, um, doc, uh, did you produce, uh, was it Ula? Or was that? Different? No, no uh, that, that is Alexander Cuerdo. Um, I, I, exec, I was a co-executive producer of Harana, the movie. Harana, oh yeah, 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 that's right. Directed by Benito Bautista. Amazing, amazing movie. Um, I, it's uh, just truly, you know, going back to learning about the art of serenade, which is, of course, a fading, if not faded, you, it's you know, very awesome. yeah. It's really great. And now we're also, uh, uh, we are in close to uh, finishing up another movie called Lab Labeled, which is uh, Road to Sydney about trans um, transformation or you know, about the transgender and talking about the, the, the issues right. among uh, the issues about uh, equality and in, in, in the LGBTQ world. And, you know, any injustice in one community is an injustice to all the communities. And so uh, this is one movie that we are also the, we're producing um, on, uh, on, this, on making sure that we can bring that issue to um, the world. And it's, it's actually not just a story of somebody who's transforming, but it's the story really of what's going on in the LGBTQ world. That's awesome. So my question actually was, where do you find the time to do everything, right? We all, we all have 24 hours a day, right? I don't think you have, you know, another eight hours or another 24 hours in your back pocket. So where do you find, you know, what, what motivates Sonia Delen to do? Oh, I, I enjoy my family so much. Um, I haven't been out golfing, but I love to golf. Um, I love to travel with my husband. Um, I do find time because then I surround myself with very good people. I have in the board of the Filipino Food Movement are amazing, amazing members. I've got PJ Quesada, Kisa Ocampo, Wendy Connedy, Alcaraz, Kevin Fogon, Alexandra Cuerdo, Mike Eng, Raf Ignacio, Pearl Parmalee. These are amazing, amazing people all over the country. I mean, we, I mean, we have in um, in San Francisco and in the in in the East Coast. We have as well also. So I surround myself with very good people in all my other organizations with Ted Benito at um, uh, Apple the App and Danvo. It really it's a matter of you know partnering up, mentoring, and and I and that's what it is. They make us, every one of us, we make each other look good. We empower everybody. <laughs> And so Maricel has been working with me too and, and Jenny at, at Gawad Kalinga. So we try to make sure that we balance our work. It is, but I must say, I have to confess, I really have very little sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's, wonderful. It's, it's, it's wonderful for you to, you know, to acknowledge and recognize all, all of these people. Oh. Everyone, uh, Sonia mentioned um, that who are helping you because really, you know, um, we, it's really a community, right? Effort, right? But all you know, at the same time, though, sometimes just to start something can be really scary, right? Because number one, you don't know if they're, you know, if people are really going to support you, right? If you're going to, you know, if everyone's going to be on board, those people you're expecting to go on board, you know, if they are really truly going to be on board, right? And you don't know if the if the community will you know will will be Support. receptive, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you you know how do you manage that, or do you even think about that when you start something? Of course, you know. I mean, not only do we have board members, but we also have committee members. You know, like um, the Filipino food movement. Once the pandemic set in, we said, you know, we've got to do something. So this is part of our COVID nineteen response, the Culinary Alive. We have a committee. We have a segment producer, Mitzi Manzano, who's just like spending so much of her time going after the different um, chefs because we have chefs from all over the world. Um, uh, we have Jennifer Ferguson for the Savor Filipino and Donna um, bring, you know, we, there is a lot of people. And, and of course, it is sounding off like the Savor Filipino Summit is one of our signature events. 
we did that in June where we brought in uh, the different people in the business to talk about pivoting, to talk about, you know, how do we do the financial, how do we help the, the small businesses? And so now we're going to do a Saver Filipino Hawaii. How do we do that? In June, in, in January, we're launching, we're going to have a Saver Filipino Summit Hawaii. And a good thing there, when you ask about, you know, if, if it's going to succeed, we have focus groups and we have the, well, what's important is we have the actual engagement of the local people. We just don't go in and say, okay, we're going to hold a summit. You're going to need to do this. We first really find out what is it that you want to do? What is the community wanting? It's not what it is that what Filipino food movement is doing. It's right. more like really making sure that it is what the community is, you know, needing or we listen and then we engage them. They're the ones working with us. Right. And that's the thing. We are also going to hold Save Filipino Canada and it and we have talks with them. They are the ones who said, Well, can you have some can you have that for us? And and then that's when we come in. And and just you know, just we just help facilitate these events as right. part of our community building. Well, I really think obviously all of your advocacies are amazing. But, you know, the Filipino food movement is really one um, powerful, you know, organization and, you know, and movement and advocacy that you, that you started and co-founded with, you know, with your family. Because, um, like I said earlier, you know, food is a universal language, right? We joke that, you know, we joke about Filipino. What is, the, what is a Filipino gathering without food? But really, if you think about it, you know, people really connect through food, Right. So now I really think that um, part of how, you know, the Filipinos are now being more recognized and, um, you know, as a culture and as a, you know, as a, uh, as a, as a uh, group of, of people here in the U.S. Is, is because of our food, right? That's, that's their, that's the people's first introduction, right? And so, yeah, so that's, that's, um, uh, you know, that's, uh, that really helps a lot in terms of, you know, getting our voices heard. And it's a fun way also, you know, to get heard, right? Like you said, when you're with your coworkers or something, right? For everyone out there, right? I know we're probably, a lot of us are probably not in our, not back in our offices yet, but when we do get back to our offices and we, the next time we think about lunch, right? Among coworkers and they're asking, what do you feel like having, you know, for lunch? We can all say, well, what about Filipino food? Right, so and that's that's amazing, and that's really a you know really fun way, really you know really a you know very natural way of introducing our culture to non-Filipino friends, right? So I want to ask you. Oh, we have another comment from Josie Disterhoff. Hi, Tita Josie. Tita Josie is uh, one of our uh, uh, one of our uh, long time. Oh my gosh. Um, supporters and, uh, you know, of, of Gawad Kanina. Um, and he, she also sits in the board of Gawad Kanina. She said, yes, great to hear the framework of fighting against injustice. The work of GK is fighting the injustice of extreme poverty. See, I, I just love, we just love how all of these are really interconnected, right? So mm -hmm. I want to ask you, a, uh, you know, a final message for you know, for the people who are watching us this evening and, you know, as you know, this is going to be, this is live on Facebook and people who miss the live uh, show tonight will have a chance to, you know, to view it later on. Um, but I also want to frame that question or I guess, you know, qualify that question a little bit more. Um, we have a lot, you know, like for, for young um, Phil Ams, and maybe not only Phil Ams, but for young people who are trying to figure out, you know, what they want, um, to do with their, you know, with uh, with their career or what career path they wanted to take, right? Um, is it really a choice versus you know you being a successful, you know, being successful in your own career in the corporate world, right? Uh, being one of the leaders in uh, Bank of America, and then also having time, you know, uh, being involved in all of these advocacies. Is it really, you know, how you know is it really a choice between one or the other? Or, you know, obviously in your, in your case, it's not. So, you know, what would you advise, you know, for, for those, especially young people who are just trying to figure out, um, you know, what they, what they want to do, you know, with, you know, uh, in their career. Um, before you answer that, I want to share our Patikim um, 
Kim, uh, package again, right? So here we go. We would like for you to please uh, visit www.filipinafoodmovement.org. That's O-R-G. And um, buy some uh, gift boxes. It's, uh, and we we'll also encourage some companies to use this as their, um, for their gift giving for, for uh, Christmas. And um, we can continue this um, a bit longer. So we have Pati Kim. And that includes the different products that are produced by our local purveyors in um, the U.S. And um, proceeds will, part of the proceeds will go to the Cusina ng Kalinga, feeding the hungry children uh, of the Philippines. All right. Um, and uh, Chrissy, thanks Chrissy, who's uh, supporting us, uh, you know, taking care of uh, monitoring the, the comments on uh, Facebook Live right now. Uh, she will be posting, if she hasn't posted yet, I don't really see the, the screen on Facebook. Um, she will be posting the uh, link to um, the Filipino Food Movement website, but you can also, um, you can also uh, visit our GKUSA's um, website, gk-usa.org, and you will see a uh, link to Pati Kim, right there. When you click to participate, right there, I'm just demoing it for you. It will take you right to the Filipino Food Movement's website. All right. All right, let me see. We have one more comment. We, okay. No, I think that's. Okay. No, uh, that was just Chrissy. She said it's been posted already. Thanks, Chrissy. All right, so. Uh, you're, I know that was a long-winded question. Um, uh, no, that's fine, which is really great because um, I, I, last year I went back to the Philippines. Um, I was invited to be the commencement speaker um, from um, my, my school at St. Bridget College. And it's really great because then I love to, um, you know, let people know what it, how it is. You know, I come from a place where we didn't even have electricity or running water. I, I came from the boonies, <laughs> from the barrio. And what it is, is always trying to learn. One is really trying to learn um, about con continuing to um, learn and, and you know, um, try to um, really understand how it is to be in, in this world where you, you really have to participate and do what you can. Um, there are many things that we are, we try to get hindered by nakakahiya or anything like that. You just make, make sure that you make your, yourself know that you have a, a space at the table all the time. You just have to, you know, stand, stand up for yourself and learn all the time what it is that you want to do. If you, there's, if there's anything that you want to do, um, don't let it, you know, you just have to go ex and explore and not, and, and not just wait for people to come and help and, and come and take you. You just have to volunteer and, and really be, you know, you have to, have to find three things. One is a mentor, someone who would help you, you know, understand what it is that you want and what, where, where you want to learn about things. Um, a coach, someone who's not just what you're doing, what, not just your work, Life, life skills and that, and a sponsor. And a sponsor is somebody who is influential and doesn't have to be where you are in your, in your play, in your work, but a sponsor is someone who would say, if, if we're looking for somebody to promote, I, if this is, and if you, even if you're not in the room, this sponsor will say, that's the person, I have somebody in mind for that position. So it's always, you know, honing your relationship with, uh, with your coworkers and, and the people around. Uh, a lot, I, you know, have to show your lead, don't, don't really be afraid to show your leadership skills. When you are at the, at the table in a conference room, speak up and, and learn how to amplify each other by bringing each other up. If somebody says something and they were being ignored, just you know, repeat what they're saying and trying to really make sure that everyone, that we lift every, everybody. Um, I love mentoring. I love doing that and, and uh, getting everybody, you know, and me also getting, um, being mentored. 
Um, those are, and, and, and I am very fortunate to have a loving, loving family. My husband, Christopher Fitzsimmons, is uh, really amazing. I have a handicapped child. I have a disabled son who is totally blind and hearing impaired. I was a single parent for the first seven years of his life, and, and uh, Chris came along and has been a great, great um, help and, and a, a, a powerful force of love. And um, in all that I do, Chris is there supporting me and supporting our family and my two, my, my two other boys, Justin Fitzsimmons and Matt Fitzsimmons. They're my best friends. We are all best friends. And so what's important is to really be, um, you know, cognizant of what you do, having some time with them, but if it's not a lot of time, quality time and saying hello. And, but the one thing is integrity. It's really important that we always keep our integrity. Deliver what you promise and on time. And if you cannot do it, let everyone know ahead of time that you cannot deliver. Keep your dignity. You know, it's something that is really, really important. Even if no one is seeing, no one is watching you, you just have to do, to do what is right. And the most important thing is kindness. Kindness to ourselves, kindness to everybody. Everything else can be done with kindness. It's the tone, even though it's <laughs> the most difficult thing. But if there is kindness, I'm really hoping that we can also give kindness, receive kindness, and be kind to others. So for me, it's you know, having integrity, keeping dignity, and being kind. That, that, that's amazing. That's, those are really, that's a really powerful message. And a lot of the things that you said apply not only to you know, young uh, people who are getting into you know, trying to figure out their careers, but also here in, you know, in, in uh, uh, Gawad Kalina, right? Or in every, you know, every other uh, maybe organization that we get involved in where we want to make a difference, we want to help out, right? Knowing that you have a space, you have a place in the table, right? Speak up, share your ideas, right? And don't be, you know, don't be timid to, to you know, to uh, share your gifts. It may not always be monetary, it may not always be, it may be connections, it may be network, maybe your talent or whatever, right? So that's, that's so true too in, you know, in uh, being involved with, you um, uh, nonprofit organizations that are trying to make a difference, right? And then you also mentioned, um, you know, integrity, right? And uh, and kindness. These are all, you know, things that we also, uh, you know, we also imbibe in the culture of Gawad Kalinga. You know, we say that Gawad Kalinga really is not just an organization. It really is a way of life, right? To give care is, way of, is a way of life. That's really kindness, right? And so obviously with the things that we do, you know, we, uh, we uphold integrity, right? And we, that's how we also attract, you know, supporters in our organization. And finally, you mentioned you are, you, you love to mentor. You, you said you love being mentored and that you love to mentor as well. So shout out to everyone who did, who's you know, trying to figure out what, what the next step is going to be. Maybe even for people who have, you know, lost their post shops, lost their businesses or something, or maybe lost their jobs and then they can quite figure out, you know, what will be the next uh, step for them, right? So, uh, you know, mentoring is so, you know, so important, it might be very helpful as well. So with that, we also want to thank Seafood City for introducing you and Marisa Villanueva, who is our uh, Gawad Kalinga USA Executive Director and uh, director, you know, and brought you here in Quantum GK to share your story, your advocacies, right? And just really the possibilities too, for people who might be, you know, disheartened, especially with what's going on and, you know, with the pandemic and everything, this is really a ray of hope, right, for everybody. Thank you so much, Sonia, for joining us this evening. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Please make it a habit every Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific. Please join us um, in Quantum GK. Good night, thank you. Everybody.